guys that are like, oh, my lay count's low, but it's because I prefer quality over quantity, man. No, it's because your game sucks. Okay, you can have lots of quantity of high quality. Surprise, surprise. What's up, guys? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. I wanted to make a quick video about quality or quantity. Okay, the age-old debate, or is it a debate? Okay, let's we'll dive in in just a moment. If you are not yet a subscriber, please subscribe for new videos every day. I am getting back on the extreme kick of daily videos. Um, lots of guys think that if you have a high lay count, okay, if you've slept with a lot of girls. They must all be fives, and they must all be fatties, or that, or that you sacrifice quality along the way to achieve such great results. Okay, bolts. You can have both. Okay, there's the big uh, aha moment that you should take away. At the time of recording this, 1,279 girls. It slowed down recently, as I've been focused on a lot of other things. But that being said, I've kept the quality very high all the way throughout. Okay. I have all kinds of field reports and, and proof and all this stuff, field reports from other guys uh, verifying the quality. I posted 200 in on Instagram. I have a whole video, I'll link in the description. It's proof of banging over a thousand girls. Okay, it's like over an hour long. I go over all these different points, okay, that, that show not only did I bang that many girls, but yes, I kept the quality very high. Okay, and I'll show a little clip of that from here as well. This was back in, in 2015 where the guy basically is saying that he's never seen a guy sleep with this many hot girls, okay? Some of them quite literally tens, okay? Here's the secret to keeping quality high while you do lots of quantity. Number one, don't put ugly chicks into your fucking funnel, okay? That means you don't swipe on the online apps on girls that are not attractive. And it also means you do not cold approach girls that are not attractive, okay? If you, if you only swipe an approach, 7.5 plus, okay, and you allow in some sevens now and then, your quality is gonna stay high, okay? It's that simple. And how do you get high quantity by keeping quality that high? You have to have solid game skill, okay? So it is a complete myth that your quality must take a huge hit, or that you must only bang fatties, okay? I'm not saying I haven't banged fatties, okay? Everyone has, all right? I, I also am not one of those people that says, Oh, I've never had a, a flake on a date or like I've never had a rejection. Of course, that's part of the game, okay? The quality was admittedly a little bit lower in the first probably 100, okay, out of the 1,279. Because as, you know, before I even got into formal game, I was going to college parties and, and this and that and, and occasionally sleeping with a fat girl. Yes, everyone has. Not everyone, but most people, okay? Um, but... Throughout the rest of the count, okay, it was just a very simple principle of not approaching ugly girls, okay? It's like, there's no reason to. When your game skill is solid, you can, and I have like thousands of pictures with hot girls, okay? I have, uh, I had over 100 infield polls on camera by 2014. I have massive, massive, massive amounts of infield, more so than anyone. I have all the proofs back up in the world. I'm not going to recreate that video, okay? I'm going to link it in the description. It's a, It's how... It's my proof for sleeping over a thousand girls. I show a lot of the girls. I talk about all these people vouching for me and stuff like that. I have nothing to hide. Anyone that attacks the number as being a real number, it's all backed up in that video. Okay, I've been transparent about it since 2012 when I hit 100 girls in June 2012 on the forums and in, in all these other places. <clears throat> um, and in terms of the quality, that's vouched for too. Okay, compare that to someone like Modern Life Dating, okay, who has no proof of any of his shit. Okay, and from all these inside sources say that he has no ability to get chicks whatsoever, okay, and hasn't banged very many chicks at all, okay, and there's kind of a huge, huge, huge bomb dropping, okay, there's going to be a second Modern Life Dating video coming, okay, a whole bunch of information was sent to me that's literally going to blow your mind, it's literally going to like nuke the entire manosphere, okay, so I'm going to be preparing that, and just I can't let the cat out of the bag yet, but it is literally going to be the equivalent of a nuke dropping, okay, on the entire manosphere and on that entire fucking little manlet faggot. Okay, so that being said, uh, click that link if you want to see my proof, both for the quantity and the quality. And as you go out there and do this game, don't think that you need to pick one or the other. Okay, guys that are like, oh, my lay count's low, but it's because I prefer quality over quantity, man. No, it's because your game sucks. 
Okay, you can have lots of quantity of high quality. Surprise, surprise. This whole like debate that you need to choose one side or the other. Guys that have low lay counts try to justify it because they have shitty skill. They try to justify it by saying, oh yeah, yeah, I only, uh, I only sleep with the, with the very best girls, okay? I've slept with shit loads of hot girls, okay? And have all the proof in the world for it. If your game is tight, you can get girls like that consistently. There's tons of hot girls everywhere, okay? And I've been living in these cities that are packed full of them. I, I, in eight, for the past eight months, I've been in Florianopolis, Brazil. Stacked Brazilians, okay? I was in Warsaw for over a year last year in Poland. Very stacked. I was in Kiev, Ukraine. Some of the most beautiful girls in the world. I lived in Las Vegas. All the hot girls are coming there. I was in San Diego for a year, a year and a half. Southern California, lots of hot girls. I was in Dallas, hot girls. North Carolina, hot girls. Toronto, hot girls. Puerto Rico for a year, hot girls. Colombia, hot girls. China, not very hot girls. Okay, but I was only there for a couple months. Portugal, England, etc., etc. The point is, and, and when you live in a big city, there's going to be hot girls all over the place. And if your game is tight, you're going to be able to get them. And you're not going to have to just rack up a lay count of fatties or not bang many girls at all and just be like, oh, I'm the quality guy. That's why I don't bang many girls. Okay? You can be the quality guy and you can also bang lots of girls. And, and one final note, because everyone's like, <clears throat> oh, you just straight go for quantity you like you're just all about banging as many girls as possible okay that's a myth as well the count actually could be way higher okay i frequently prioritize my rotation girls over new dates okay i'll, I'll be canceling new dates all the time okay because I, I build close relationships with my rotation girls the girl i'm seeing out here in brazil we've, we've gotten pretty serious the girl who's on my channel and she's becoming a, a lot more videos and i that's what i do I spend the time with them. I'm not, I'm not just going out racking numbers. Okay, the past few months, for those of you that have been keeping up with the count that I announced on the channel, it hasn't gone up very much. Okay, and it used to go up a lot, a lot quicker. And I'll show that graph one more time of the progression. But it wasn't just balls to the wall. Okay, that I passed on lots of girls that didn't make the cut, attractiveness-wise. I canceled lots of new, new dates in order to see rotation girls. Um, et cetera, et cetera. I, I prioritize other stuff in life. I do martial arts. I, like, like guys think like it, that I'm just like hardcore going balls to wall to max out lay count, which is absolutely false. It could be way, way, way higher. Okay. I think if I was going like hardcore balls to the wall, I could have cleared 2000 by now. Okay. Contrast that the next best real count that I know in the game is around 650. And that's a coach that's on my team that runs the mentorship with me. Okay. By the way, if you have interest in joining that mentorship, there are limited spots, free 30 minute call. Uh, click the link in the description about that. Subscribe if you have not already. Uh, lots of really, really great videos coming with this uh, Brazilian girlfriend of mine. We're gonna be making how to open, how to escalate, how to deal with friends in the group. Um, she'll give her input on all these threesome experiences. She's not, she never had a threesome before me. And since me, we've had about 11, with 11 different girls, okay? and multiple foursomes as well so we're going to be putting out all kinds of cool shit okay we're going to be trying to hit viral hits to snowball the channel okay because just putting out very good value content videos isn't enough you need viral hits okay i've even considered doing like a fucking like prank infield channel centered around um pop culture bullshit kind of like how simple pickup did okay um but those guys sucked at game okay so it's frustrating having by far the best system and the best skills at this and then seeing all these fucking clowns run around with multi hundred thousand subs and, and I know for a fact that many of them have not hit triple digit lay count or even in some cases double digit lay count and I know for a fact that almost none of them are banging hot chicks, okay? That being said, thank you for, for joining me as always. Uh, you really are going to love this Modern Life Dating Roast Part 2. Could quite possibly be my, my best roast ever topping the Tyler uh, most popular video on my channel. Okay, I don't want to let out any secrets, but it's going to be great. He had the highest view count field report thread, and he also went around and met a lot of the top guys and spent extended periods of time with them and then wrote an objective, unbiased, honest review about his experiences with them with full details. Okay, so I'm very proud of this report that Matt wrote about me, and I want to read it to you. This was in August of 2015. I had been with 450 girls at this time, and I had two threesomes in this night that he was hanging out with me. He hung out with me other nights as well, and I'll, I'll talk on one of those. But I had two threesomes, almost three, in the same night. This was back three and a half years ago, August 2015, okay? 
Let me read it for you and enjoy. He writes, first night of traveling, literally cock blocked by Flo Rider in San Diego. Sometime in the afternoon, I hit up JMULV, JMOL, Phonetic, he's banned. I'll call him Jay from now on. So I was banned on these forums because I started a competing company. I used to work for Real Social Dynamics in 2012, actually, as an instructor assistant for Todd. And Todd and Jeffy said they had never seen a guy get this good this fast before, okay, the game. So the next sentence, for those who don't know, this is a guy that used to coach for RSD and wing with RSD Derek. He has fucked 450 girls, has a penthouse city across from the hottest club in the city, has a penthouse suite across from the hottest club in the city, and constantly pulls three stumps and four stumps with his stunner girlfriend, no joke. Anyway, brother and I meet up with Jay at his pad and we chat, drink a little, and he talks about his new infield products he's launching and how he's marketing them. Meanwhile, his gorgeous girlfriend is just chilling, obviously not phased by the fact that her boyfriend is one of the best slash most notorious players on earth. Now keep in mind, this is a very respected guy, okay? He's, he's met a lot of the top guys and he spent a bunch of time with me. This isn't just like a quick little like, oh, I'm gonna just spend a little bit of time and then write this thing. This is an honest, unbiased review, okay? He's really getting into a lot of detail, as we'll see. One of his bootcamp students comes over and he shows him a bunch of specifics about his game, demonstrating on his girlfriend and then having the students try it. I've been going out ever since I turned 21, but some of this stuff was really helpful and practical. Interestingly, his game is all about logistics. That's the epiphany I've reached before when I've gone on runs in the past. When I'm not going out as much, I forget this. That's really the thing though. How a really good game works is basically ignoring attraction or getting it in the first five seconds, or at least having it develop naturally as you're figuring out logistics. The rest is just finding some way to hit all their excuses and get them to somewhere where sex can happen. Long story short, 99% of the shit on this forum is superfluous at best. What's possible is just so far out of people's realities that they have to make it much more complicated than it is. All right, so note that I've already had one threesome and now I'm coming back to the club. We head out to the club across the street around 10.30 and start hitting it up. First girl I talked to is a hot Swedish girl. Her and her friends seem down to come back later. I introduce them to Jay and his girlfriend. I drag a few more groups of hot girls over to them. Everything seems to go pretty smoothly. Around 11.30, Jay and his girl pull a threesome and I'm on my own for a bit. All right, so there's the first threesome, boom. 11.30 p.m. in the night. He says, I keep hitting it up, things are going really well, but my phone is dead so I can't get numbers and I have nowhere to pull with Jay gone. So they come back and Jay sees a hot redhead girl he likes and asks me to open for all of us. Blows open. I'd already opened her, in my opinion, hotter brunette friend unsuccessfully earlier, but it ends up being fine. By 12.30, these girls are all ready to come back with us and fuck. Four out of five of them are smoking hot, and there's only three of us at this point, not including Jay's girlfriend. So we were basically ready to pull them, but the ch my chick that I was dating at the time like fucking cock blocked here because we had just had a threesome. So he says his girlfriend, however, feels like she's not getting any time to have fun in the club because they just got back from the last pull. So she cock blocks, pulls all the girls to go dance. Jay's a bit annoyed by this, but it's still 100% on. Jay's fingering the redhead while she fingers his girlfriend. Every girl within a 10 foot radio radius of us is trying to grind Jay's girlfriend. She could pull chicks solo better than 99% of, of the guys on this forum, okay? In the meantime, I walk around and hit up a few other really hot girls. What happens is that I'll hook the hottest one and she'll be totally down to come back to the penthouse with us, but then just one or two of her friends won't totally be on board. Still, there's a few I think we might be able to pull. About this time, Flo Rider comes on stage and everyone goes ape shit. The girls all want to stay until the end now. We wait around about an hour and try to spread out our pull options and get as many girls as possible to come back to the place. The night wraps up and we've got our five girls with dripping pussies ready to come home with us. There's only one problem. One of their friends is on stage with Flow Rider. We send various people to go get her, but it backfires and two of the other girls go up on stage with them. Before we know it, Flow Rider's crew has snatched up all our girls and walked out the private entrance in the back. Jay is equally incredulous and pissed. Yeah, that fucking sucked. Like we had chicks that were down to hook up and then the one chick on the stage fucking blew it out by when we went to save her, that took the rest of the group. So we head outside, try a few more pulls. I grab a girl who's basically a 10. Keep in mind, this is Matt writing this. And she's down to come back with us. Unfortunately, her friend is sick and my phone is dead. I have her give her number to Jay's girlfriend and text her from her phone. Next, we find the Swedish girls, which was my first set of the night, and pull them pretty easily. Unfortunately, once we get up to the penthouse, it all goes downhill. They're all super standoffish and not down, not down for hooking up. It doesn't help that Jay is antagonizing one of them while a student simultaneously runs a nice guy game on her from the other side. Finally, they leave and the bootcamp students do too. A cute girl who Jay's girlfriend danced with earlier comes up with her friends. All right, so we had had numbers, me and my chick that I was out with, we'd gotten phone numbers. I hit up one of the chicks and it was basically a chick my chick had danced with and then she comes up with her friends. I take them to the bathroom. So Jay pulls her into the bathroom and his girlfriend locks in his second threesome for the night. The rest of the night is just a shit show of sexual debauchery Jay is intermittently fucking one or both of the girls 
in between the girls are grinding each other and making out totally naked and in plain view. Hashtag blue balls. That's another typical night out for me, okay? So he writes, I could probably write another 10,000 words with all the shit that went down last night, but that's basically the gist of it. All right, now here's some lessons. Number one, he learned so much. Jay is the real deal. I've seen some of the negative press floating around regarding him. Of course, because motherfuckers are all hating against the fucking top guy at this shit. He says, but in my experience, he was a great guy and his game is just fucking out of this world. Number two, I've seen a lot of shit doing pickup ever since this journal started, but I've never seen anything like last night. Just seeing the way that absolutely stunning girls will come on 10 to 20 minute pulls home and have threesomes and foursomes is mind blowing. I can't imagine how far removed this be from the reality of the average guy. Again, this is where the fucking hate comes from. He says it's like a fucking glitch in space time, all right? What motherfucker who's hardly ever getting laid, okay, isn't going to hate against a guy that's getting two, almost three threesomes in a night, okay, within 10 to 20 minute pulls, okay? Guys hear this and they think, liar, must be hookers, blah, 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 okay? It's not fucking hookers. Sorry to break it to you guys. All you guys that wanna just dismiss all the proof that's in this video and dismiss all the proof that's been on the forums for years, okay, and just think, two threesomes in a night must be hookers or must be a lie or like 300 girls on Instagram must be all hookers. Like, yeah, you can say that. It makes you look fucking retarded, okay? It's not in the slightest bit true and I can back up this shit in a million ways. Nothing to hide more proof than anyone. I've said that all the way through. Anyone that hates against me, I put out a video. I'm like, look, here's all this shit I have. What, what do you have to say next, right? Like, that's why I'm making this video. There's just been so many instances where guys are like, Oh, I, I can't comprehend this. I can't comprehend these, t these feats happening in the game. And keep in mind, this was, he's saying all this great stuff, right? This was August of 2015, three and a half years ago at 450 girls. Okay, this, I've now more than doubled that amount three and a half years later. Where do you think my game is at now? Where do you think my skill level is at now? Where do you think like the, the quality and the effectiveness of this Leads Machine product I put out like six weeks ago Okay, where do you think that is at now? Like, where do you, what do you think is a night, a night out now is like? That's what I tell guys, like, this is what my game has evolved and improved a lot more since then. Who has field reports like this? Who has people writing about them like this? I don't see it. Okay, who has students that are getting 47 girls in six months? Show me. It's usually just a strikeout fest. Like, I met a guy in Vegas. He had been in Todd's immersion for eight months. And I said, how many girls have you banged? And he was like, well, I'm going out six or seven nights a week. And I haven't banged any in that eight months. And I was like, well, what the fuck are you doing? And he, like, y are you getting trained here? And he said, yeah, Todd says my game's improving a lot. And that's the problem. Here we have it. That's the problem in the community. Your, your game's improving a lot? Great. Does that, is that helping you in your dating life? Is that helping your love life, that your game is improving? That you're learning a lot about theory? Okay, that you're able to cold read and do all this other bullshit that Todd teaches? No. Well, how about, wouldn't you like to get laid? How about that? What a novel concept. Wouldn't you like to learn how to get laid? in a day or two? I know how pretty well. Number three, in the past, when I've hung out with guys who play a game like a sport and just rack up numbers, I felt like I wanted to learn from them but would never want anything like their lifestyle. Going out with Jay last night, I couldn't help but think, damn, I kind of want this. Sexual abundance beyond what most guys can imagine. An awesome, chill, and beautiful girlfriend in a rooftop apartment. It's definitely the fantasy. I'm just excited to be part of it right now. Cheers, lol, what a first night. He says, most of the lessons I'm learning are little things that are hard to verbalize. The big thing that sticks out to me about Jay's game is that it doesn't stick out. It's just regular solid game, but extremely refined and subtle. It's like if you were to watch a great pianist versus one of the best in the world, the differences are subtle, but one makes millions of dollars and one is just getting by. Okay, Matt281, he spent some more time with me and was impressed even more. I'm not gonna go over all his field reports about me, but he wrote in his epic 2000th post on RST Nation. And again, I would be showing you the RST Nation screenshots but we had to go in through the Wayback Machine and grab these because RST Nation is currently down. Um, he wrote a, a 2000 post. It was called What I Learned, Winging With and Living With Four of the Top Guys in the Game. Okay, and these were all separate guys. One of them was a the guy who I originally started my company with. Okay, and here's what he has to say in that post. Perhaps the first thing you should know about Jay, which will probably be the first thing he tells you, haha, <laughs> is that he's fucked over 450 girls. Jay's game is a much needed counterpoint to all the inner game and self-help content that seems to have taken the community by storm. He's hyper analytical about game to an extent that I've never seen and extremely methodical about everything he does. For example, apparently it takes eight to 12 minutes for a girl to lose state in a cab and just about everything in game can be mapped with a graph or a flowchart. Jay uses alcohol, for better or worse, to take care of vibing and everything else is systematized. 
He's also an anything goes kind of guy. As far as game goes for Jay, the end justifies the means. If it's easier to get into a girl's pants by telling her he's a famous DJ, he won't bat an eye doing it, whatever works. As far as he's concerned, in many ways, game really is just a game with very specific obstacles and rules. Everything is dealing with logistics and objections and very little, if anything, is off limits. Say what you will about this, but there's no doubt that it works. From the time I spent going out with Jay, it was clear that not only does he pull more frequently than just about anyone, well over 100 a year recently, but he's also been with some of the hottest girls I've ever seen. A few of them are quite literally tens, okay? Again, people will come out of the woodwork, oh, they're hookers. No, they're fucking not. He saw me pull strangers from the club, you stupid fucks. Okay, I spent a few nights with him in a few different cities and it seemed that three sums and 10 minute pulls were the norm. Okay, now let's quickly look at some of the comments that people left on this post. Someone said, this is such an incredible post, thanks for sharing. Get him because I know, was the guy I started my company with originally. It is interesting to me because he has so many lays at such a young age. JMULV is cool too because he can strip down game to its bare bones and get great results. Okay, another guy says, this is exactly why I need to start reading your field reports and Kat's field reports again. Those are easily the best threads on this forum. He's saying that Matt2A1 has the best threads on RC Nation. Okay, his field report thread is one of the best threads. He's one of the most respected guys. This guy spent extended periods of time with me. There's plenty of others that spent extended periods of time with me, okay, in these WhatsApp group threads. I put it out to the public on Instagram, 300 different girls. I recorded tons of infield footage for years, put that all out, okay? I know what I'm talking about extremely well. My students are all crushing it. Case closed. Another big argument that I think is very important is the results of my students, okay? I consistently have guys that got nowhere with pickup and dating, and they spent lots of years and time and effort and money on it, and then on the first night I transform them, boom. I have tons of testimonials where that happens. I have tons of reviews where that happens. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.